Hey, welcome to Coco Ponics. Uh, today's video is going to be uh, basically me trimming these strawberries up because I'm getting a bunch of mold in my strawberries. This is uh, obviously in a greenhouse, so the major issue is probably ventilation. But if I don't cut all this out, it's just going to keep spreading. So I'm going to go and trim up all, all the real mature growth. And leave all of the new growth. And hope that that is enough to kind of cut back on the mold. Increase, and increase the, uh, the airflow in here. That way the plants don't stay moist all the time because because this is in a greenhouse I get a lot of humidity and having that extra one so there's a strawberry completely molded I can see that. yeah so would have been a good strawberry now it's just a giant ball of mold so I gotta remove all of these Otherwise, I'm not going to get a single ed edible strawberry this year, which sucks. I hate cutting out all these nice looking strawberries, but it is what I have to do. So I'm going to go ahead and keep trimming. Man. And kind of clear up all the space, see if that kind of cuts down on what grows in here as far as mold growth. Last year I didn't have this problem. I think uh, what the problem is is I, my, I had my fan off for a couple of days and that was just enough to create mold growth. So if you have a greenhouse, make sure you keep plenty of proper ventilation. All these strawberries are wasted. The other thing that I noticed was a, a large amount of insects moved in here over the course of a couple of days, mostly on the pepper plant, but they were kind of spread out throughout the greenhouse. And it may look like I'm butchering the hell out of these plants, which I am, but they will grow back. As long as I don't cut them down too far, they'll be all right. Kind of got to leave some of the, the new growth on there, these baby leaves that are coming up. By the time I'm done, this whole bed, it's going to look damn near bare, but it's a preventative measure that I have to take. I want to be able to at least get some good strawberries off of this thing this year. So, here's your major lesson for growing in a greenhouse. Always leave your fan on. You don't want to waste a crop, whatever that crop may be. Well, there's a lot of mold growth. The other, the other thing that I think contributed to uh, the mold growth is how, how densely I, I planted all my plants. Uh, in my last video, I mentioned that I went from, I think it was 54 plants in this bed. Now I'm up to, I think, 70, right around 75 plants. So the, the planting density is a lot more compact, which, which will cut down on airflow and kind of make a, a, a good place for mold to grow. So there's one mistake that I made. 
Hopefully you don't make the same mistake. Make sure you keep your planting density not too tight. But by doing this, now you can see all this space in between here, in between the plants, is opened up. It's going to make it hard for moisture to stay in here when I kick my fan back on. It'll create the airflow so that the, the water, because the water inlet hose, I have a splashing to kind of aerate the water. So that creates more moisture, especially in, on the right side of the bed over here to my right. It increases the amount of moisture that splashes up onto the bed, onto the, the raft, and the plants on that side of the bed get mold more quickly than anything on the other side of the bed. So, oh look, I've got a caterpillar. The other thing when you plant this densely, you get a lot of insects coming in here. A, it's warm for them to live. This time of year in the winter, Everything's looking for a place to go where it's nice and warm, nice and safe. You got plenty of plants packed together. The insects find this is a safe place to be. And if you get the wrong ones in here, they can heavily impact how well your plants grow. They'll, they'll eat the leaves, slow down growth, potentially uh, damage your ability to even grow anything. So everything's going to get trimmed up, obviously, except for the uh, pepper plant here. I'm going to leave that guy there, but when you're trimming these strawberry, man, this one doesn't look good. Might have to pull that one. Yeah, I'm going to pull this strawberry plant out. This one doesn't grow very well. It isn't growing very well. Got hardly any leaves. This one barely has any newer growth, so we're gonna toss that one out. Over on this side over here, I keep all my uh, plants that were runners, so they can still kind of grow, but they're not really set permanently. So if I have a plant that doesn't do very well, I can always pull from that and replace the location. This one's super wet, it's kind, of, it's kind of been submerged a little bit, but it'll dry out now that it's in the net pot. I don't use any uh, any medium inside the pots, don't really have to. The only thing that the, uh, the medium really does is stabilize the plant, but it's not 100% necessary, especially when you have smaller plants like strawberries. They kind of grow into the uh, net cup itself, and they'll, they'll stabilize themselves after some time. Oh, this is disgusting. Yeah, it looks like a dead animal. But, we're going to get it all cleaned up. Revisit this in a couple weeks. Hopefully. Hopefully we'll get some good strawberries out of here pretty soon. So sometimes you gotta do this when you're growing plants, you gotta sacrifice a little bit to get a good harvest. You know? Especially these strawberries, they're uh, ever bearing strawberries, so just because I'm trimming these back doesn't mean they're not gonna grow later on and produce something later on for me. If you, if you had June bearing strawberries, the kind that only produce one time every year. And then yeah, you may want to be cons you may be a little more concerned about when you're tr trimming your plants back, how much you're trimming them, things like that. I didn't realize I had this many plants over here. I'm gonna end up moving these probably outside later in the year. For now, I'll stay right there.
not 100% sure on this, but when you're trimming your plants back, if you're going to cut off all your leaves, you probably want to make sure you don't have any flowers on the plant because those are going to sap a lot of the uh, nutrients and energy out of the plant and it's going to be harder for the plant to grow back its leaves is what I is my idea on that. I don't know if that's fact but it makes sense to me because the plant will generally try and put more energy into its fruit. Make sure all this dead stuff is out of here too. Just kind of clear the way for new growth. So if these plants can dry themselves out a little bit, well, not dry themselves out, so the wind can or the airflow can dry the plants out, create a healthy, healthy environment for them. Last year I didn't have this problem with mold. I had a little bit, but increasing the planting density really kicked the mold growth up a notch to where the, the fan that I have isn't enough to battle the mold growth. Kind of disappointed I'm not getting any strawberries off of this right now. I think before the mold started growing I got two berries and that was it. At the end of uh, trimming all these plants, I'm going to show you a side-by-side -side comparison how these plants were doing compared to how my plants, my strawberries are doing outside of the greenhouse. Because not only do I have these 70-something plants, I have probably right around 800 plants outside. And of those 800 plants, I think I have two or three flowers. Well, the other thing is that it's an issue. I don't know if you can... I don't know if you can really see it on this leaf. But there's... It almost looks like dust, and that's fine mold growth on the surface of the leaves. And that's across all my plants in here. So that's one of the things that I want to eliminate. I want to eliminate as much mold from this section as possible. And hopefully keep it from growing anymore by doing so. If I remove it all, it won't spread as fast is kind of the thought process behind that. And, of course, this is just a minor setback in the grand scheme of things. Uh, at the end of all my videos, I, I always tell you to keep dreaming for your future. And, you know, I, I tell you that because I believe that everybody's capable of achieving their dreams. Uh, you just have to take your take that that effort and take your dream and, and kind of start taking whatever first step that is towards your dreams. You know, one of my dreams is to have a self-sustaining farm on this property. I'm, right now, I live with family and and we're on 40 acres and. Up until a couple years ago, I didn't really participate in growing this property at all. 
and then two years ago I started taking over the garden. Last year I started raising chickens. Uh, one of my goals for this year was to get sheep, start raising sheep on the pasture. We have a th three acre field. It's got nothing in it, just growing weeds. However, probably gonna have to put that aside for this year and shoot for next year. So, you know, when it comes to achieving your dreams, you're always gonna have setbacks. Things aren't gonna work the way that you expect them to. Nothing's gonna come easy. But the major thing about it is you gotta keep working for it. You gotta keep rolling with the punches when you have a negative like all my plants are moldy just gotta work with it find a solution you know everything takes some time not everything comes easy and that's just the way real life is but if you stay with it keep working keep doing everything in your power to improve your situation you will eventually achieve your dreams and your goals become successful. My little motivational speech for today. Probably gonna go ahead and stop talking for now. Continue trimming. Kind of give you a shot of the end at end result. Here's one thing. Once your strawberries start getting this brown spot right here, it's pretty much not going to produce well or it's not going to ripen up very well it's going to have this brown spot that's going to mold and the whole rest of the remainder of the strawberry is going to mold with it so if you start getting these brown spots you're almost never going to get a good berry might as well remove it while you're ahead don't even waste your time with it trim this pepper plant. I read an article a couple weeks ago about uh, mowing strawberries, which I didn't know people actually did, but basically when you have a field of strawberries that you got going into winter, this, is, this only applies to June-bearing strawberries, not really the ever-bearing strawberries, but uh, if you have a field of strawberries and you're already past your harvest, you know, you've harvested for June, coming up on August, you can go ahead with a lawnmower and just mow the whole field back. And it actually helps the next year's growth by eliminating any leaves that have disease, uh, any parasites, anything like that. It also helps to remove all the dead stuff because as, as the plant grows, your leaves will start turning brown, yellow. They'll die off and they'll just kind of sit there. So you can go ahead and remove that with a lawnmower on the, the June bearing strawberry fields. When I go and show you my uh, strawberries outside, there's, there's nothing impressive. It doesn't look impressive. There's nothing uh, really growing. It's just a bunch of 
baby strawberry plants that haven't produced anything yet. They're all runners that I collected from last year's plants. Uh, when I started the strawberries, I actually only started with about 20 plants in here. The remainder of these plants are all from runners. Uh, this is my saw. First year was spring of 2016. By spring of last year, I think I had about 200 strawberry plants off the original 24. Uh, by the end of there we go. Memory card filled up. Been talking too much, been trimming too much. Uh, so what I was saying is, uh, started with 40 or 24 plants. By the end of the first year I had a couple hundred. And then by the end of summer, this last summer, 2017, I have, I have now right around 800 to a thousand strawberry plants and I have them all packed really tightly outside uh, on the outdoor growing area uh, and those are just planted real dense for the time being I'm probably gonna go back out dig them up and spread them out a little more this in the next couple months that way they have plenty of room to grow I just kind of packed them into one bed for now because when I did, the rest of my beds were growing other vegetables. So I didn't have any room to plant them. But I wanted to keep them. I didn't want to throw them away. I want to keep increasing, keep growing the amount of plants I'm growing. So, I worked with what I had. had no space so I planted them super dense so that they'll survive at least through winter once they start producing we'll have to spread them out a little bit oh it's coming along pretty good here in the next uh, month or two I'm gonna start planting seeds for my spring and summer crops I haven't quite decided what to grow yet. If you have any suggestions, let me know. Uh, at the time of recording this, I'm, I've still got a pretty small YouTube channel. I think I've got a total of about 90 views. Some of those are from me clicking on my videos by accident. Some of them are natural traffic. So if you could, help this channel out by clicking the like button, the subscribe button, and maybe sharing some of these videos with someone that you may know on Facebook that's into growing plants. I plan on producing a lot more videos from here on out, mostly informational about gardening, farming, whether that be about plants or animals. I'm learning. I'd like for you to learn with me. By no means am I an expert. I'm kind of learning as I go. Putting my ideas into action without really researching. So I'm going to screw some shit up. But hopefully we learn together. One important thing with these uh, floating raft beds that I haven't really been practicing is uh, cleaning all your dead stuff out. All this brown right here is from dead plant matter decaying and breaking down. Uh, I actually replaced the raft on this thing over summer. Uh, probably closer to fall actually. And it's already looking pretty filthy. Probably gonna have to come back out here in a couple weeks, remove all of my plants, clean the uh, the raft off, kind of give it a fresh slate to start growing again. Uh, 
Uh, if you happen to be watching and you have any suggestions on new videos I can do, any ideas, let me know in the comments. I would really appreciate it. Uh, this spring I plan on, instead of doing sheep, I'm going to be doing meat chickens, probably about a hundred at a time. Hopefully we can film that whole process start to finish, give you as much information as possible so you can learn, so we can all learn together. This is not the ideal setup. I have this workbench right here. Makes it really hard for me to reach that back corner. I never really thought about that. But got to work with the space I have. Maybe I'll have some improvements later on. did do to inhibit the growth of the mold is I sprayed neem oil on this whole bed and that helps two things it helps inhibit mold growth it also inhibits insects from eating your plants it's a uh, natural organic deterrent. It's a pest. It doesn't create a good environment for mold to grow. Uh, and it is, of course, organic. Uh, that's one of the things that I like to do in everything that I grow. I don't put anything into my system that isn't natural or organic that has, has to do with, that goes for everything that goes for my chickens that goes for my plants uh, I won't put anything in my system that I won't eat and of course when it comes to aquaponics especially you have to be real careful about what you're putting in your system anyway because your fish will be affected by whatever you put in, especially if you're putting harsh chemicals, uh, chemical-based fertilizers, anything like that, anywhere near, near your system, you could potentially cause damage to your fish, damage your whole aquaponic system. So, I have 72 holes on this bed. So, 71 strawberry plants, one pepper plant. Uh, that is, of course, if we're not counting these ones that I have stashed around the edges. Alright, that's it. Everything's trimmed up. Everything's cleaned up. I'll check back in with you in a couple weeks. Give you an update on how these guys are growing. Uh, I'm going to take you outside, feed the fish, and show you... My strawberries outside. Yeah. 
run. Go feed the fish. They're probably not gonna come up. It's too cold outside. I think we had our first frost last night. Okay, let me see. Oh, here we go. Here's our oats. Those are growing nice. Nice and tall. Looks like regular grass. Don't know if you know what oats looks like. But that's it. Got our snap peas. And all the way over here, amongst all the weeds, is our strawberries. Gotta come through here and clean it all up. But yeah, these are all my runners. I need to come through and cut some of these vines where the runners are still attached to each other. But I'm going to dig them up, spread them out in the rest of these beds later on. Probably fill up the rest of these. But here's my two flowers on the outdoor strawberries for this year so far. Of course it's not the season for them to be growing all that much anyway. So, I've got that bed of strawberries over there. Take you over to the raised bed. Kind of show off the rest of the strawberries. I've got tons of them. This whole bed of strawberries was populated by four plants. I believe it was four plants that I transplanted over to this box. And that's how many run runners those plants produced. This right here is a thornless boysenberry. This is, a, I bought it in the summertime. I've gotten zero fruit off of it this year. Uh, hopefully this upcoming year we'll get a lot more out of it. Now I've got a thornless blackberry here. Got another bed of strawberries. Blueberries are blooming. I did not know that they'd start blooming in January. But we've got new growth. Those are doing pretty nice, except for this one. This one doesn't really have new growth yet. We'll see how that does. And here's the last bed of strawberries. So you can see I've got hundreds and hundreds of strawberry plants. If you want to start strawberries, you don't have to buy a bunch. Just buy a few and they will reproduce like crazy as long as you take care of them. Uh, I think that's it for today. Uh, thank you for watching. And remember, always keep dreaming for your future.